Hi creative friends, this video is going to be part two of how to make your own dog cross stitch pattern. Uh, first though, I am going to show how I finished up the part one um, beginner project. After I had the row of paw prints and hearts stitched, I finished up the bookmark by putting a kind of a checkerboard pattern border on the edge, did that by folding the sides under straight along the weave so that um, the holes of both layers lined up and I was able to stitch through both layers. That way the back part of the stitches tacked down that um, folded under edge. And uh, it was the same thing on the top and the bottom just uh, folded that straight and it was only at the corners that I uh, was stitching through four layers of the fabric. So I thought it um, turned out nice and that finished up um, the beginner level project of uh, the paw print bookmark. So now on to part two which is going to be a more medium level, and that is going to be uh, making a cross-stitch pattern from this photograph. Uh, this is Indy, and uh, this photo would have been taken about 1980-something, I think. Um, and yes, that is me way, way back in the day. So I started by making a color photocopy enlargement and drawing a grid pattern on it. I'm going to start marking the pattern down in this lower right hand corner and um, we'll make myself a little landmark of this lower right hand box so I have the same starting point. The main thing about making the pattern is um, marking the, the boxes or squares of the grid to match the colors of the grid that's on the photo. A big part of charting is deciding on the squares or boxes, or could think of them as pixels. Um, all of these being pixels that have to be one color or another, and it's deciding on ones that have more than one color in them what, uh, what that color is going to be. And it's basically the majority. So like this particular pixel here has some white in it, but it's mostly green. And this pixel here, again, has white and green in it, but it's mostly white. So... I'll start again down in this uh, lower right hand corner and this area here is where there will be a color change. So I can mark this um, all green and it's four columns, um, four rows from this lower corner that will definitely be green. So one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five rows up till I'm at um, this area. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'll go ahead and mark this real quick. Um, these are all definitely green. And then also in this direction, there's a little bit of white in this box, but it's definitely mostly green. So. Um, from here, you can go ahead and mark this uh, direction uh, a ways so that um, since there's really not any decision to make um, in that direction. And then um, from here on up, this column or row here going up is definitely... Um, going to continue to be green. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's enough to mark for now that I can definitely see that um, this corner here is this here. And to start marking the white, um, for those, those little boxes or those squares, it's just going to be a small dot. And so starting from here, it uh, will be white for one, two, three, four, five boxes, since this one is definitely more white than green. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then from here on up will be green. And I can fill in the rest of that later. And then from this point where there's a change going in this direction, I'm gonna say that this box is um, more white, slightly more white than green, but from here on over is more green. So I'll change colors and mark for a little ways. Um, put the green symbol so those will be those will be green and then for this next row up these boxes are white or mostly white that will be one two three four five that I'll mark white so one two three four five and then it changes to green. And then from this point, going up is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 white stitches in this row up and down. So from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I'm gonna mark my little landmark and it just helps um, to kind of keep my place on the chart. So this box, to the right here, I would say is more green. So from here on over, I will mark green. Diagonally, this box here is definitely more white. This one here, I would say is more green. So I will change colors again. And so this row here, uh, from here to here, is white. So by doing it this way, um, kind of working and figuring out the edges, um, some of it is um, pretty easy to, to just fill in. Um, from there. Progress on making the pattern of India is coming along and I wanted to show um, a few of the things that help me making a pattern like this. First is that this initial charting is simplified. Um, there's just one green symbol indicating the grass and background, uh, one symbol indicating the brown areas of his coat, on the white areas, I've uh, got the areas that are in the sunlight uh, differentiated from the areas that are quite a bit darker in shadow. And um, the details will be easier to put in once this first stage is done and I can see the pattern as a whole. Uh, another thing is that I'm using some color to make the chart 
So um, some green and brown, obviously. Unlike store-bought cross-stitch patterns, um, and any that I've ever got are printed out just in black and white. Um, and the colors are indicated by different symbols. And that's fine to stitch from, but to make a pattern from scratch, it uh, helps a lot to be able to just look at it and for, for example, um, to be able to tell what's brown and what's green without having to decode any symbols. Another thing that I do is I put in what could be called little landmarks. Um, a few of them they do show here where I have um, indicated certain boxes and they correspond to a box on um, a, a square of the grid that's on the photo. And that just kind of helps with accuracy and uh, finding my place as I am charting um, and being able to see uh, what row I'm on because I can see the little landmark on the original photo and the chart. Another thing that helps with accuracy is once I get into the pattern is I am working uh, row by row. So I uh, have just finished this row here, which is marked, you know, just by having the photocopy uh, sit where it is. And this uh, little placekeeper piece of paper is sitting on uh, the same grid line of the original photo. So to go to the next, we'll just move this up one row, move this up one row, and uh, continue charting, and know that, uh, that the pattern is gonna be accurate. So again, uh, this is coming along. I'm nearly halfway done with this uh, first stage. And uh, then, once I can see the whole thing, can go on to putting in more details. All right, I finished the first stage of the pattern, which was uh, charting the basic green, brown, and white areas. And I've uh, made a good start on putting in more detail, such as uh, the shadow in the grass and the darker areas of his coat. And actually, at this stage, it wouldn't be too bad to go ahead and uh, stitch this as a project, just with um, a dark and a medium brown, white and a tannish gray, um, and then two colors for the uh, background. And it would be recognizable as a dog, as an English Springer Spaniel, and... Um, like I said, would be um, a pretty nice project to do. And hopefully that shows that if you wanted to, to uh, make a chart from a photo of your own dog, it doesn't have to get super complicated, um, just a few colors, and um, you, know, you would have a nice project to do. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and keep on going um, with the details, and I'm going to do at least three colors of brown, a dark, a medium, and then a light brown. The white areas have um, white, a uh, light grayish tan, and then a darker grayish tan indicated. And then the grass um, and background, I've got uh, for now, two colors of green, two shades of green. I probably am gonna go ahead and add one more um, just to show a little bit of the detail in the foreground graph. So it'll be um, uh, even a little bit more detailed and colorful. Since this pattern is gonna take quite a bit longer to stitch, than the uh, paw print bookmark project. Um, we'll go ahead and end this episode here. I hope some of you are inspired 
to do your own project. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.